Heads up. If you have kids around, parental advisory is <laughs> yes. in effect. This, this, this is the Bonus Bone Podcast <laughs> with Lamont and Tinelli. It's like water torture. <laughs> Baby Huey. <laughs> Shasta. <laughs> and Joe Hawk. Welcome back, friends, to the Bonus Bone Podcast. Chasta and gang, which today includes Tonelli, Baby Huey. What is happening? And Joe Hawk. Hey. We're missing the big fella. Yeah, well, we are. the other big fella. <laughs> the other big, big Canadian. Fella. The big Canadian. <laughs> the Canadian bacon. <laughs> CB ain't hanging, big fella. So, <laughs> we're taking on a hot topic today. Mm-hmm. This is a juicy hot Not topic. Not the store. Not. <laughs> Sorry. True. Sorry. Although a lot of these bands might be in that oh, store. Oh, did you ever shop at a hot topic before? Before? Oh my God! Do you even know what a hot topic Paul? is? That needs to be a YouTube. I refuse video. to do that. <laughs> oh, come on. No. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I know I should refuse to do it. It is Tanelli's hot topic makeover. You make a reel. No. That needs to happen. I am not, oh my God! I would pay to see you. I am not down with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, the juicy tidbit we are chomping on today is about what Mick Jagger said over the weekend. So Mm -hmm. Mick Jagger came out and said there are a couple of artists that are keeping rock interesting. I'm paraphrasing, but you get the idea. They like like their energy. Yeah, he said they're adding excitement to the rock Mm -hmm. genre. The two he named were... Machine Gun Kelly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Young Blood. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling that was coming. To be fair, I'm not well versed in Young Blood. I, I mean, saw Young Blood at Warp Tour pre pandemic. Right, right, okay. right. That right. was my first introduction to him. Yeah. So let's just take a reading of the room. Mm-hmm. How do you guys feel about those two artists and the in the capacity of which he's saying they are? So I did take the time uh, to watch a couple of Young Blood's music videos. Yeah. And like, honest, I never seen him perform. And the only real introduction to him was watching him on Ridiculousness. Yeah. And I hated his energy. Yeah. He was just okay. annoying. Okay. But from what- How I, was he annoying? What made him annoying? I, because I, I, I have not it seen was, that. He was just, you know, just annoying. Like, he wouldn't shut up. <laughs> okay. Um, which I guess what Lamont would say about me. I was just, you took the words. <laughs> <laughs> He's the young blood I thought of the, the silence bone would, would speak volumes for you right, right there. Uh, um, young Hawk, that's his young, name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, but I did listen to a couple of his songs, and I get the kind of like proto punk kind of sound mm-hmm. that Mick Jagger was saying, like post punk vibes, young blood. But then you get the Machine Gun Kelly, and I already wasn't a big fan of his, uh, just because. He's a uh, punk. F- from the rap, from his hip hop background? His hip hop was great. Okay. But the fact that he went to like pop punk, mm-hmm. I feel like it was just a, 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 not really a money grab, but, mm-hmm. you know, if he wanted, I, I do commend him on wanting to change his image, change his sound. And for what he's doing good at it. So I really can't rag on him, except I just don't like the fact that he rags on other. On everyone. On everyone. Sounds, you know, just like how. Other morning shows are rag on our morning show or other morning shows. What other day. morning shows? Yeah, exactly. I don't even know what you're They're talking about. So, so being the cynic that I am, <laughs> yeah. is he changing his sound uh, as an artistic choice in changing yeah. genres? Or is he just tapping into a, another monetary market as a capitalist? <laughs> That's what I thought, the, the the latter there. I thought it was just a money grab for uh-huh. him. But I don't know, he's... He's doing good at it. He was on. He made top uh, top ten, top five. He was top. Yeah. He was the number second. two. Number two for twenty twenty one. He yeah. came in as the number two quote unquote rock artist uh, for that year on because, Billboard. So, well, so for the Boneheads who don't know, yeah, Machine Gun Kelly's known for rap. But yeah, he just released his second pop punk album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's definitely been crossing over in the last like two years into the rock genre. Mm-hmm. So. I feel like you need to make your really great point early on because I think we can build oh, okay. on that. Baby Huey made a great point. He did make <laughs> a great point. Here. I know. I <laughs> shut it down. If they let me have the mic. Before I st- steal it from him, mm-hmm. I'm going to well, shut my okay. mouth and let you do it. So here's the thing, and this is ongoing debate. You know, we've had in various forms podcasts, you know, live streams over the last few years. You know, is rock alive? Where is rock at? And the big takeaway I have is in order, I think, for rock to stay like in the mainstream sense as far as people relevant relevant in people's mm-hmm. minds okay if if people are not paying attention to some of the current active rock bands you need artists and people influencers if you want to use that term from other genres okay you're bordering on annoying right now get to it <laughs> wow 
Oh, look at this guy. <laughs> when Lamont's away, Pinelli will play. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying artists from other genres who do take the time and cross over and make a rock related album, uh-huh. we should be embracing them because they already have a huge following. Mm-hmm. And if they take their audience and, be, and bring hey, look, them into rock, bring them to rock, right. that's great for rock fans and the rock genre and for anyone in the rock format. I think mm-hmm. a really great example of that is Miley Cyrus. Yes. And she was yeah. one that I waited on for a long time to do anything in the rock world. I still don't feel like she's really done it. I want mm-hmm. her to do a rock rock yes. album, like a true act. Oh, she rock can too. Album. You know she can. Absolutely yeah, she can. She's got the Absolutely. Pipes. Oh, but when you're talking about making rock relevant or making rock artists relevant again, she worked with Joan Jett. She worked mm-hmm. with Billy Idol. She brought those people into an in totally new world. I mean, kids, kids these days, but like, eh. I mean, what do they call them? The Zoomers, the little ones yeah. now? Yeah. They didn't know who Billy Idol was. They didn't know, they might not have known who didn't Joan she play Jett was. At the Chris Cornell benefit yes. in LA? Yeah. yeah. So she did rock performances. There. Exactly. So we know she does rock covers all the time. Mm-hmm. She yeah. does Zeppelin in her set. Yeah. So she's introducing these iconic artists, the ones that we're very comfortable. This mm-hmm. is our wheelhouse, mm-hmm. but she's taking that and she's exposing it to a whole new generation. So I think to your point, she's a perfect example. I just happen to like her because I think she can sing her ass off. So I think oh, I she agree. does it really well. Yeah, but she's got the attitude and she's got the name and she's yeah. got the branding and she's got all of that right. to, to kind of complete the picture. Exactly. So, so I, what I was trying to get at also is, okay, I know people like to hate on Machine Gun Kelly for whatever reasons. Yeah. Publicly. What he's well, I mean, done. he's kind of a douchebag. Yeah. But yeah. I think that's like part of his brand. But I, I, I think as far as what he's done for rock, you got to do embrace it and kind of, you know, give him cro- uh, uh, kudos for that. As far as for big people who are just hip hop fans, he's like, hey, check out pop punk. Mm-hmm. If you like this style, check out these bands I'm influenced by. Is Travis Barker playing drums. So well, Travis Barker's playing drums for everybody. But, right yeah, but, yeah. So, but, but yeah. younger Except people like Travis Barker. Oh, let me right. check out Blink-182. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. It connects a lot of dots. Yes. So is Mick Jagger talking about music? Is he talking about attitude? Is he talking about branding? That's is he talking question. about all of that? He was really talking about energy and excitement. Yeah, I think he it, it was. It was almost like yeah, it was almost like bringing something fresh to the rock space, which I I can understand what he's saying there. So we're not just talking about flat out music. I hope not. I think it's a total package. So. The image, yeah. Okay. I don't think so. It's, young blood to me. If you look at him, he does kind of look like a young Mick Jagger a little bit, as far as his style, his yeah, what he's putting there, out in the over world. The top. Mm-hmm. So, with that being said, though. Look at Mick Jagger. He's arguably one of the greatest frontmen of all time. So he does have a powerful voice. His voice still has influence. So a lot of people are Without seeing that or be like, oh, my God. Like, it's it's huge kudos and props for those two guys that Mick Jagger is acknowledging them. But I kind of wish he would acknowledge some other bands. It hurt my soul that he didn't speak up about bands with incredible frontmen yes. and mm-hmm. women. Uh, you know, obviously, Dirty Honey, we talk about them all the time. Joyous Wolf, mm-hmm. Dorothy, yeah. um, Dead Posey. There, like, there's so many bands out there that are killing it with, that are more along the lines of what Mick Jagger represents, yeah. which is traditional rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Does that so make as, sense? as the adult in the room, when you bring up traditional rock and roll, yeah. I'm all about classic rock. Yeah. Throw in some blues and a little bit of jazz and stuff like that. So yeah. when you talk about new rock, that's out of my... Out of my, uh, yeah. it's out of my wheelhouse, right? Yeah. So I immediately think of Greta Van Fleet. Yes, of course. Mm, yeah. Nice. Now Greta, what's interesting about them, and and we love them, or I love them. I know Huey does. We've yeah. seen them together. I don't know three times yes. or so now. Three or four. Yeah. Jealous. Yeah. Aftershock, <laughs> yeah. 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 So we love Greta, but it seems like Greta might have really been. I don't want to say that I feel like they should be, but I'm just observing numbers here. Mm. Wonder if they were a flash in the pan. And I say Jump that. the shark a little bit. Because, yeah, they were really hot. And then yeah. they people loved them or they hated them. Mm-hmm. I mean, anytime we post something about Greta on social, you guys see it. People comment with some serious hate. Yeah. Because they feel like, again, not my words, I love Greta. But they feel like they're a Zep ripoff or they're a 70s, you know, mock band, whatever. Right. Um, because of the way they dress and their brand and all that stuff. And so if you look at the charts, I mean, they're down at number 48. Mm. Out of the top fifty, yeah. and can we just say one thing? It kind of made me laugh. I was looking over the charts here. I mean, was it what does Billboard? it say? Yeah, Billboard charts. Okay. What top fifty for last year? Mm-hmm. What does it say about Nickelback? our genre? <laughs> what? Oh, some oh, of the names on Nickelback? the list. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know it's incredible. When we're still seeing bands <laughs> like CCR. Okay, I mean, yeah. you're talking about. 
what, 60, how many years is that? 60 years after the fact? Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I love CCR. Hello. I mean, come yeah. on. I, I was raised on that kind of sound. But when they're still at 11, yeah. they're number 11. Wow, look at that. That's what right, I'm saying. That's right pretty after. Is that the like streams or and then, sales? And then the Eagles. Which, no, but the thing is, the Eagles are still touring. That's right, thing, exactly. Though. I mean, CCR. Like, So my point to that is, that tells me there might not be a ton of of other bands trying to push them off the list. Right. You know what okay. I'm saying? I think okay. there needs to be more development in rock, more love in rock. These mm-hmm. labels need to be searching out the great rock and supporting them like they used to, which is key. I kind of wonder if Mick Jagger would have said Dirty Honey. If he maybe doesn't know about them. And, and, and what influence would they had with Dirty Honey jump I know. Charts? Of course it would have. Because you know everyone today, after hearing what Mick Jagger had to say, because let's face it, he's basically rock royalty at this oh, yeah. point. It doesn't get bigger. I mean, he and Robert Plant, what they say is gold. Mm-hmm. So how many people are looking today up Youngblood? Most people knew who Machine Gun Kelly was, yeah. but maybe not as many knew Youngblood. In the last week, it would be interesting, their stats. Oh, I'd love to they see They skyrocketed. It. The other thing, too, and Joe knows about this, mm. you, know, you look at other platforms, movies, TV shows, like yeah. James Gunn. In all his projects, he has amazing soundtracks and bands that get featured on his movies like Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. Peacemaker, and HBO Max. Bands that get played on there get like a revival through him. Oh, yeah. That yeah. makes me wonder, like, I wish maybe James Gunn or people like that would embrace younger rock bands and use them. Instead on, of. In their soundtrack. But I get it. You, you want to play the hit songs with the big blockbuster mm. movie. I, I understand all that. And I mean, that's the entire notion of radio right there is that you want <laughs> listeners, right? You want, and everybody expects when they turn on the bone, I don't want to go too deep into this, yeah. but whenever the, <laughs> everybody expects when they turn on the bone to hear something that they know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we do go off the rails for free for all Friday for yeah. an hour on Friday and we do play whatever. And that's a surprise. But if you do too much of that, your audience goes away. So you really yeah. have to find this Perfect balance. But I was also, we were talking earlier, and not to play Tinelli. Like, no, by the all Tinelli means. conspiracy. It makes you wonder. By Huey, get the tinfoil you- hat. Come on, let's go. <laughs> but I got you- one over my desk. I'll bring it in for you. <laughs> I want to know, is there any connection between Mick Jagger and Young Blood and Machine Gun Kelly? Are they the same label? Or no, or something? Yeah, yeah, I'm powers. sure you can dig into that yeah. and find out yeah. for sure. Like, same hey, management, same somebody. Yeah, yeah, agent, bands, stuff like that. Please do us a favor and mention these bands. Yeah, I mean, because I don't have anything personally wrong with or I'm not offended by Machine Gun Kelly or Young Blood. Like, they're artists. They do their thing. Yeah, I, they're cool. not my personal pick, but whatever. I go for more, more like soulful sounds like, mm-hmm. you know, Dirty Honey. Yeah. But you're right. I think there has to be some sort of reason. I mean, do we? Okay, here's a question. How do we even believe, know about that? That's my, <laughs> do we believe that Mick Jagger's sitting in this house rocking Youngblood? Does anyone believe that? Or Machine that? Gun Kelly. I don't. He's listening to th- pop know. He's got enough kids that are... Within a crazy that, age, that is a great age point. range. That is a great point. <laughs> Women he's dating. I just, yeah. I just have a hard time believing that he Mick came Jagger up with that on his own. is going online, pressing, I would have looked up young blood. But maybe I'm wrong. I, that's a total assumption. Yeah. <laughs> that makes, I mean. So from a musical standpoint. Yeah. <laughs> I did a little research. Oh, yeah. I love research. <laughs> no, I'm just, and, and who knows? Maybe I'm going to bring up. Bands where you're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, they're so Greta Van Fleet yeah. five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Still love Greta, though. Thunder oh, Pussy. Oh, yeah. I thought they, I, I was checking out some of the videos. I thought that was fantastic music. It is. Mm. I like, I mean, just from a musical standpoint. Right. I don't know about branding, although branding Thunder Pussy. I mean. <laughs> and I just keep saying Thunder Pussy. <laughs> it was well, great. It? I need. Mean, well, thunder we, Pussy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And there's different ways to say it, too. But right. Thunder Thunder. Pussy. Right. Right. Uh, oh, but anyway, the music was great. I love the drive yeah. of it and, oh, yeah. and the vibe of it. So, but uh, d- they're endorsed by Pearl Jam. Okay, not nice. as there impact- you go. Not as impactful, I guess, as Big Jam. And what about uh, Aaron Jones? Mm-hmm. Mm. A, a little bit of a. Um, uh, I was saying not her salesman. Okay, no, I know, exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> He's got it like a Lenny Kravitz vibe to him. Yes, okay. absolutely. I, and I thought his stuff was absolutely incredible. Yeah. Are these artists that you follow in your no, personal? No, follow. Are okay. you kidding? <laughs> it's all about the Thunder Pussy. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> follow. I used a social media term there. I apologize. You're right. My bad. Not follow. Okay. No, no that's I was just great. checking things out. And, and to my taste, I was like, oh, I could listen to that a lot. Yeah. Okay. There's an artist that you and I share a love of, and he bounces all around genres. He starts in rock, and then he goes all over the place. St. Paul and the Broken Bones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about musicality. My God, mm-hmm. that guy, nobody beats his voice, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And he was real rock, like truly bluesy rock, I would mm-hmm. say. Right. Um, and the first couple of albums. And then he has tiptoed into all kinds of different stuff now. He does a little bit. I haven't bit checked of, out the new stuff. It's different. It's right. different. And and either you stick with him because you love him, and I have, but my husband Jay is kind of like, what the hell is this? It's kind of disco-y. Mm-hmm. It's oh, got cool. some 70s funk to it. Okay. Which is, his voice can, can well, abide he's back. got that 70s he's got funk that, voice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I don't mind if bands, if they genre bend. I actually think that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. And what I love even more are collaborations between mm-hmm. two genres. When they do come together, I yeah. think that's really interesting. Okay. None of that bothers me. I, I just, like Thunder Pussy. <laughs> We all like Thunder Pussy. Well, I, I'm gonna have to edit in a, like a ding every time. I, Thunder ding, Pussy I know, right? We're, we're keeping track. I just, I just think as a bigger question, something we all need to think about is where our the state of rock really is, really is. If we're mm-hmm. looking at the top fifty, and we have artists on there like CCR, Eagles, oh, Elton John. I mean, that's great for this brand for 107.7 The Bone because that's yeah, what we that's play. That's all classic rock. Stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Journey, Nirvana, Metallica. Some of them still putting out new music. Some of them still touring. But for God's sakes, Elvis Presley is number 30. Yeah. God rest the king. But why is Elvis Presley number 30? Like there should yes, be the- banging drums, quite literally, banging artists out there that should be pushing an artist that's been dead for as long as I've been alive mm-hmm. off of this chart. That's well, nuts. And of course, you know, there is that biopic coming. Excuse me. Biopic. 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 <laughs> biopic. It's definitely biopic. Biopic for Elvis, which yes. that's probably why he's still on there. But of course, you know, but that he was, is, this is last year. I know, but it's kind of crazy, though, because, you know, Michael Jackson Elvis will still always be, and the Beatles, probably be the most uh, best-selling artist of all time. Yeah, but, I agree. I but, mean, Elvis was my first true love. I like mm-hmm. I completely get it. But I do. It does make me question. Yeah. I mean, it's all over the map. Then you have Willow Smith. Willow Smith. Yeah. Which, where the hell, what the hell is Willow from? Smith doing on the list? She she's, was on the Machine Gun Kelly song Emo Girl. There you go. So, so she's on. Twi- she's 29 right above Elvis. It's a little all over the place, if I'm being yeah. honest. Mm-hmm. I, I my point is, I wonder if rock knows what rock is these days. Mm-hmm. And I, I know, think let's ask the uh, the Academy, that's the an, Grammys yeah. and all that stuff. That's an existential question. That's it's all about very Thunder hard. Pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes you wonder, like, the big powers that be, the big machines, like, mm-hmm. what wish they would do more to embrace those bands we just talked about. Yeah. Grammys you- and, you know, other awards and TV, all, all the different outlets can help embrace these bands more. I wish they I would do they more can. to help support rock. It just seems like there's things are so spread out on a bit all over the place, vibe-wise and sound-wise. Like the 70s, 60s, let's go back. 50s, Jesus, I could keep going back. 50s sat, had a sound. Mm-hmm. You could hear anything out of that era and go, yep, that was a 50s. Yep. Same thing, exactly the same thing applies for 60s, mm-hmm. 70s, 80s, Absolutely. and 90s. We all know what those sounds yep. were. What's the sound of 2022? That's a good no question. one knows. Yeah. It's all Billie over. Eilish. It, maybe. Well, I would say yeah. that there hasn't maybe. been a, a new sound like you're talking about, like a, a definitive sound branded of a sound right. yeah. since the Seattle grunge of the, of the of 90s. The 90s. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I that's what I think. I think once we went over 2000. Old guy take. No, yeah. no, no, no. I think that's super valid. It, Doesn't mean there's not a lot of rock and a lot of great music, yeah. but it's maybe that's because of social media, because so many people had more access to get their music out mm-hmm. that it just... So it, it isn't a sound. It's diluted. Yeah. Yeah. The labels aren't pushing out a sound anymore. Oh, well, we know Zeppelin works, so let's get mm. five sa- bands that sound like Zeppelin. Right? Yeah, how many yeah. bands in the 90s were signed just because they look like Nirvana? It, oh, absolutely. Or, Soundgarden. Yeah. or sounded just like, like them. Was it Collective Soul from what, uh, Georgia, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. They wore flannel in their video. Exactly. STP got labeled grunge, but they're from what, San Diego? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just interesting to me. I think the state of rock is, it, I don't think it's dead at all. I think there's so much going on. And like I said, for the bone, this is good news for us because yeah. our artists, quote unquote, never die. I mean, they do, but they don't. Yeah. <laughs> Another podcast we could do it. Some I read a fascinating article today about how 
the what's the new generation? There's the Zoomers, but what's the like? If you're twenty something right now, what are you called? Not oh. a millennial, but a Gen Z. Oh yeah, Gen, Gen Z. Gen Z. I think so. They're yeah. trying to stake claim over Nirvana. Like the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, oh, I yeah. will fight that. Oh, oh, I know. I, I, it's, but it's it's kind of a compliment because they get. They get a bit pissy when somebody calls Nirvana like an oldie band or a classic band or whatever. They don't think they should be in the classic rock genre because this generation, for some reason, has attached themselves so hard to Nirvana. They feel like Why? they have ownership how, over that band. I don't know. They? Wait, how old are you saying? Like, like, like the 20s? Yeah, like in the 20s. Like 25? Yeah. So they were born after Kurt Cobain died. Died, right, exactly. Yeah. But then again, you know... I. Janice was dead before I was born, and I love her, and I take ownership of her. I took ownership of Buddy Holly. <laughs> <laughs> about Thunder Pussy? <laughs> You'd like to. Yeah, not, not quite yet. I'm, I'd like to see more bands that look like Thunder Pussy. <laughs> I love you. But the, All right, well, I think yeah. we got to, we, we wow. went round and round again. Nirvana's nowhere. my band. I know, I, I, know, I, know, yeah, I know, I know. I grew up with that. I know, it's just interesting how you can take ownership and how an entire genre, or entire, um, what's that called? Ownage? Nope. Uh, generation yeah. can take you know, ownership of something like that. Mm. How do even, yeah, how do they even claim that? Like, how do they get introduced to them? I don't know, but again, this, the is, bone. this is good news. Exactly. This is good news for the bone because that means Nirvana will continue mm -hmm. to be sure. a mainstay, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and a staple. And, but classic know, rock here. does need to move forward and, and in keeping with that. I think so, too, but there are people who would argue that. <laughs> and, and I'll leave that one right there. Yes, you will. <laughs> That's a good yeah. ending point. Yes, it is. Uh, we would love to hear your thoughts on this, and <laughs> yeah. Joe Hawk made us an email. Yeah, that's right. So if you guys have any comments on today's episode or have any questions for us, feel free to give us an email to at thebonusbonepodcast at gmail.com. There you go. Also, I just want to shout out, if you do listen to The Bone, subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a five-star rating. Yep. Leave a comment. Interact Begging with Begging for us. ratings. Yes. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, you got, you you got to get that rating <laughs> on Apple Podcasts. That's a big thing. You get That's how you move up. <laughs> leave us a review unless you have something bad to say, and then remember what your mama said. Don't yeah. say anything at all. All right. We love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. We really hope to hear from you. I want to hear your thoughts on this as oh, well. Yeah. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye.